shaped, you know, there were shaped canvases and it was just a minimalist shape. And eventually I realized, no, they were the tiles in the Lincoln Tunnel. That I'm Phyllis Tuckman. We're in Rutherford, New Jersey, just off Union Avenue. We've come to see the house that Robert Smithson and his family lived in until he was about seven years old. It's a two-family house. Um, his elementary school was across the street. One of his childhood friends sent a note to Nancy Holt mentioning where he used to visit Bob as a kid and mentioned how, high, how many steps they had to go and it really is a very uh, steep, rocky uh, staircase and then the Smithsons lived on the second floor. At that time, Bob's father worked for um, Auto Right. Uh, the steps weren't that steep for Bob though because he was always the tallest kid in his class and had to sit in the back of every um, classroom in Rutherford and Clifton. My last name, uh, otherwise he also probably would have been parked there because Smithson was at the end of the uh, alphabet. This is the Washington School. We're literally only a couple of yards diagonally from the house where Robert Smithson um, lived as a little boy. And this is the school he attended. At one point, um, he drew a practically life-size dinosaur on multiple pieces of paper. And they were posted in the hallway of the Washington School. Um, in effect, his first site-specific work. And you see crew practicing on the Passaic River. Um, you see foliage that in the summer when the trees the trees are green, you're looking at, at a coral. You're not looking at some um, dismal, depressing scene. It's, it's quite beautiful. In fact, people are fishing over there. I, this is like the third time I've seen them fishing. So See, the, and the ducks, Union, ducks, ducks, I mean, Bob, what I like to d I say is that Bob was looking down at his feet. He wasn't, he wasn't <laughs> looking at the scenery. Um, he had a particular perspective that has been distorted by people who have not, um, taken the time to come to Passaic and see what he saw. Right, this is the playground Smithson visited. The one with the sandbox. And the sandbox would have been right up over there where the clay equipment is. Stadium. My interest in Smithson really got piqued because I immediately knew this was the Passaic High School football stadium wall. You know, the one where it's inscribed Passaic boys are hot, Passaic boys are whatever they are. Yeah. Um, but I, it, 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 it is a monument. The, um, what would you call these concrete plaques? These large chunk pieces of concrete. He also photographed them in a separate photograph. So there are at least three photographs from this immediate area. Um, and then in his notes, 
that are in the Archives of American Art, he describes different um, auto, auto places. That when I was in high school, um, but in 1960, I still remember seeing Henry Cabot Lodge on a whistle stop campaign train stopping to um, give a stump speech. See, these buildings are really old. Um, the next one is going to have a date on it. Like, I vaguely remember, yeah, 1892. Um, Nancy worked in a dress shop on the next block. This was all train tracks. Uh, when I was a kid, this was one of the most Jewish um, towns in America. Now it has one of the most famous Orthodox towns in America. St. Michael's Orthodox Cathedral. Okay. Oh, thank you so much. You're being a, a great sport. But I'm really embarrassed they didn't send you a catalog. Gail said you called right away. Um, no, it's not okay. Oh, this was the museum. Yeah, this is the, this was the museum and uh, uh, all things sundry. Wow. Wow, this is the museum. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, get the fish. This is the original uh, floor. We had, we had this. Yeah, there seems to be like something here, basement. too, with the, the cards. Some kind of poker like thing. But yeah, this. Uh, oh, this is it. This is the museum. This is it. This yeah. is the same wood paneling. Oh, this was his father's workspace. Yeah. Nancy said his dad had a workspace. Yeah. And uh, a lot of these cupboards do look pretty old. Oh, my gosh. Well, for a tall guy, he must have had a little bit of a head bumping in here, though. <laughs> He's not got a very high ceiling, but yeah, it's but wood. He wasn't, he wasn't it's all paneled out. tall yet. Yeah. It is all paneled out, isn't it? Just uh, as in the picture. Robert Smithson one made one of his greatest non-sites with rocks that he collected here in Franklin. Um, we're the furthest away from New York in terms of um, the New Jersey, the pieces that have New Jersey themes. He originally came here in 67 with Mike Heiser. Um, and the piece is now in the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago. Uh, at that point, unlike the Pine Barrens non-site, the boxes go right on the floor, directly on the ground, without any kind of pedestal. They are 
somewhat in perspective and they're accompanied by an overhead map of the area as well as a series of small instamatic black and white photographs uh, that is in the collection of Bob Fiore and Jane Crawford. In other words, it's a really complete non-site from soup to nuts. But it's a magical piece, and in a lecture that Nancy Holt gave in Princeton um, shortly before she took ill, she referred to the rocks in the Franklin non-site as the magic of the rocks. Because as you could see, this is a beautiful autumn day. The sun is shining, the leaves have turned. People are collecting rocks here. But then you go up this ramp, this, this incline, and you put the rocks under an ultra black light. And if you're lucky, you have a rock that lights up in the most amazing abstract patterns and in colors, uh, a, a colorful palette of blues and greens and reds. It's, it's, it's the most astonishing thing. You go from plain Jane to a chorus girl with just the flip of a light switch.